Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve is subsequence lead code number 392. So we're given two strings, which we're going to call S and T, and we need to return true if S is a subsequence of T and false otherwise. So a subsequence of a string is a new string that is formed from the original string by deleting some, or basically none if you want, of the characters without disturbing the relative positions of the remaining characters. So i.e. ACE is a subsequence of A, B, C, D, E, because if you delete B and delete D, then you're left over with A, C, E in a row. So A, C, E is a subsequence. However, A, E, C is not, because even though those letters are contained in the string, you lose that relative order. Okay, so in this example here, if S is A, B, C, and T is A, H, B, G, D, C, you can see A, then B, then C. If you delete H and you delete G and D, you're going to be left with A, B, C, and so here you'd return true. In this example here, a x c, well, we don't see x really anywhere in the string, so that's definitely going to be a false. Okay, so let's use this example where s is a c f, and we do see that as a subsequence of t, we can see a c and f, so ultimately this one would return true. So the idea here is to basically use an index for each of the strings, so we'll give i to t and j over to s, and then we just need to keep checking if they match. So yes, they do match, okay, then we're going to move j over over, and we're also going to move i over. Now do they match? Well, they are not matching. t at i is not equal to s at j. And so we cannot move over j because we haven't found this character c yet. We're still looking for it. So we'll just move over i, and now we can see that they do match. So we're going to move both of them over in this case. They do not match here. We just move over i. They don't match here. Just move over i. Since they match here, we actually matched at the very last character here. So you would return true because j got to the end of the string. If we actually had the case where this was say a g, then what would have happened here is that i would have gotten to the end of this string, and if i ever gets to the end of the string before j gets to the end of its string, then that's going to be a false. So that's really all there is to it here. You would use these two indices to basically just move them along. Whenever they match, you move them both over, and if they don't match, then you're just going to move over i. Okay, so we'll get capital S is equal to the length of of s and we'll get capital T is equal to the length of T. Now some quick base cases, if lowercase s, the string, is equal to the empty string, uh, that actually is guaranteed to be true. So if you ever are looking for the subsequence of just nothing, that actually defaults to be true. Kind of silly, but that is the case. Now another one here, if capital S is actually greater than capital T, so if the length of s is greater than the length of T, well there's no way you can find a subsequence that's bigger than another string. That makes no sense. And so that's going to be a case of immediately false without looking at the strings at all. Okay, otherwise, we must have that t is at least the length of s, so we can loop through them. We'll get j is equal to zero, so that's going to be the index for s, but then we're going to actually go through i via a for loop. So we'll do for i in the range of capital T. And if they match, so if t at i is equal to s at j, so if the characters are matching, then we want to move over both the indices. However, if it's the case that j was on its last index, so if j is equal to capital S minus 1, that's going to be the last index of the string s, well then you know you got to the end and so you'd return true. If that's not the case, but they still matched, well then we simply just want to move over j. Because it's a for loop, we're always going to move over i no matter what. Okay, so that is going to get our answer here. We can simply just return false if we ever get through this for loop, because that means we didn't find it over here. And this is going to get the correct solution in a big O of t time, because you're basically just looping through t. t is guaranteed to be at least the size of s. And then the space complexity is going to be big O of 1, because we're not using any data structures. Okay, if you run that, that is going to work. And I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.